Hello everybody, how y'all doing today? Today, uh, my phone needs to be charged so I can't look at the timer. So every now and then you might see me look that way. So yeah, so, uh, today's daily Bible verse is Genesis 1-5. And we're doing the entire Bible. Not all in one video. It's so one video at a time per verse. And that's the verse that is, uh, too short and I might, uh, expand this to two. But anyway, today's Bible verse is I done told y'all, so God, God called the day, the light day and the darkness he called night. And there was morning and evening and there was the first morning, the first day. So yeah, so sometimes God works in processes. He doesn't just make things happen sometimes. Some, and to me, that's um, to test our faith. Like I might say, uh... God, uh, I wish you would help me with this temptation or that. He might be like, okay, I'll help you a little bit here and a little bit there, but the rest is up to you. Yeah, and for those of you who are wondering what's on the other screen that y'all can't see, that's my, uh, list of games that I play. Mobile games. I got a Star Trek Fleet Command on Monday. On Tuesday, I got War Machines. On Wednesday, I got War Robots. On Thursday, I got Pocket Minecraft. On Friday, I got Gundam Mobile. On Saturday, I got Star Force. And on Sunday, it's just retro games. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I really do, uh, we, as Christians, we need to come together and we need to be like, look, things take time to heal sometimes, but we don't need to do it alone. We can tell others about our problems that, that we can trust anyway. And we can tell psychiatrists and pastors, because they should have, uh, well, especially licensed pastors, they should have experience dealing with this. Or they should know uh, of who to talk to about this or who to talk to about that. They should know. And look, God works in processes. He didn't just snap his fingers and say, boom, everything was made. No, he works in processes. And to me, that's how Christianity should be. It should work in processes as well. And we should, uh, you know, work hard at whatever we're doing. Like me, it's these videos. These videos take a long time to edit and upload. I mean, they can take hours. But I, cho I choose to do the hard route because I want my videos to look good. I want them to look presentable. I don't want them to look uh, ugly or, um, you know, I want them to look good. And I want them to be in HD. And sometimes, um, sometimes we, as Christians, we, uh, we forget about, uh, things. And, and we forget that there's a process to things, and we want things done now. And we got saying, look, wait, we're going to work through it. Like in the, think of it like an addiction. You might not start off stopping altogether. Some of you might start off slowly stopping. And what do I mean by that? I mean, like, like let's say if I drink every day. Maybe if I started drinking every other day, then it goes to every, then it goes to every third day, then every Friday fourth day, and so on and so forth. Things take time sometimes, because it can be hard to stop, especially with an addiction. But sometimes it's easier just to slowly uh, cut the stuff out. Like, uh, if I were to become a vegetarian, I would might start to slowly cut out some meat here and there, and I'll stop all of a sudden, because if I stop all of a sudden, that can be dangerous to my health. And plus, it can, um, you, you know, make me want it even more, I guess. But yeah, and things take time. Listen, God loves you. He does. There's a, a family member of mine that's having surgery. And I pray that uh, y'all keep her in your prayers, or him in your prayers. And I also pray that you keep me in your prayers because I have high blood pressure. I have Tourette's Syndrome, I've had a history of depression, and I have floaters. Now, let's break that down. High blood pressure, we also know what that is. Tourette's Syndrome, 
It has to do with random muscle movements. Um, depression. You know, we, we all pretty much have gone through that. But to me, it got to a serious point. And uh, floaters. What's that? Well, floaters, sometimes I see like these falling, like little um, line things. It hasn't happened to me uh, in a while, but sometimes I do see them. And uh, that, and I learned that everybody has that. It's just some of us can see it and some of us can't, which is weird. And yeah, so um, yeah, so we need to keep each other in our prayers, and we need to hold each other accountable. Because sometimes we don't hold each other accountable and bad things happen to good people even. Bad things happen to good people. And look, um, the Bible says, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All of us includes me. It includes your pastors, your presidents, your uh, congressmen, wh whoever... Even uh people, even like teachers, and people uh who educate us. Well, yes, that, that would be teachers, but uh, even um, as Sunday school teachers, even they have fallen. But the question is, are they willing to learn from their mistakes, and are they willing to repeat the same mistake over and over again? Because let me tell you something: the first time I can see God maybe forgiving them, but the tenth time. I can see what God would be like, why are you still doing this? You know it's wrong. And you know what? I'm going to let such and such happen to you now because I forgave you the first few times, but this is the tenth time, and you need to learn from your mistake. And we need to. We need to learn from our mistakes. Yeah, so, um, you know, and like I said, there is a process to things. You're, like, God didn't just snap his fingers and create everything. There's a process. And sometimes, like, the process can be hard. Sometimes it can be difficult. Sometimes it can be, uh, very uncomfortable. But there's a process. There is. And listen, no matter what you're going through in life, no matter who you wronged, no matter who wronged you, God can forgive you. He can if he chooses to. Like I said, if you continue to make the same sin, sin over and over again, and, if, and let me add this, if you continue to ask him forgiveness over and over again, then he's going to be like, why should I forgive you? But let's say that if uh, like you really, really working hard at it, and like it's like this first time, you, it's like you just committed a sin, but you ask God for forgiveness, and you really working hard to make sure that it doesn't happen again, He'll forgive you. That's what I believe. He'll forgive you. But the tenth time, He, he might. I mean, that, that's not up to me. That's in between you and Him. But I don't see him doing that. So I think we we'll get some water my right quick my mouth's getting kinda of dry. Yeah, and while we're talking about this, I wanna say something. Sometimes healing takes time as well. Sometimes it can be uh you know, we can be like the person that was lied to or the person that was hurt by such and such. Healing can take time. Healing is a process too. And it can be hard, it can be challenging, it can be depressing. It can be all of these negative things. But healing takes time. And a lot of us right now, we have the ability to communicate, but yet we choose not to do it. What do I mean by that? I mean like we have the internet now. We have cell phones. Some of us uh, even uh, can go 
we have uh let me tell you, we have uh internet cell phones we can go to church hopefully if we're not in the lockdown if not we can use facebook to communicate with our friends and family members or we can use a messenger app on our phone or whatever but a bunch of us are choosing not to do that and that's actually hurting people there was this speech i heard today it was by Adolf Hitler, which, you know, but it says that basically, you know, all of this technology calls for us to come together, but yet we seem to be growing further and further apart. And yeah, so even Hitler knew that way back then. Well, yeah. And even, even if Hitler knows, knew that then, imagine what he would say now to the divisions that we're having, to the fights that we're having, to the um, riots that we're having, to all of this destructiveness, all of this despair, all of this sadness, all of this, um, you know, imagine like, what if God was, uh, was decided he wanted to be like a normal person again except not sin and he came down from heaven and tried to help people and you would be happy with all of this what we've so called accomplished now, I'm not saying that we haven't accomplished anything I mean from a technological standpoint we changed a lot I mean and from uh not just technological but some of us have truly chosen to honor God and to glorify Him. And we might stumble and fall, but we ask Him for forgiveness and we work hard to make sure that that doesn't happen again. Or if it does happen again, we work even harder to make sure that it doesn't happen again after that. And listen, right now, some t uh, doctors will prescribe you medicine. They'll prescribe you uh, some things for depression. They'll prescribe you, well, let's so let's say with depression. But the Bible says that if you feel depressed, well, actually, I, this is what I believe. If you feel depressed, ask God to come into your life if you haven't already, and praise and worship Him, and glorify Him, and talk to your local pastor or minister about what's going on in your life, or heck, even a good friend. And I also urge you to see a psychiatrist. Because I'm going to be honest, they might put you impatient, but that might be for your betterment. And what do I mean by impatient? I mean that like they might put you in a hospital with some other people for a few days or for a few weeks. Yeah. So, um, and how do we handle that? Well, to me, we get, we, uh, how do we handle depression? Well, to me, we need to find out what's causing the depression and maybe stop it or, like, talk to somebody about it, try to get them a different point of view or, um, like, just to slow it down and just to focus on the good things in life. Like a, a lot of times we focus on the negativity, we focus on the sadness, we focus on the, the despair. But one thing we don't focus on in, in this world a lot of times is God and His will. I mean, like I said earlier, we have all of this technology, yet we seem to be isolating. We seem to be growing apart from one another. We seem to be relying too much on this new technology and not enough on ourselves or on others. Now, I'm not saying that we uh, we can be perfect, but it's those imperfections that matter. You see, technology, it, um, like, let me give you an example, playing a video game. Playing a video game might not seem like a bad idea, but it is if you consider what you could be doing. Like, uh, and this, I'm not talking about VR games, and y'all gonna see why 
but y'all can go outside. Y'all can uh meet friends. Y'all can go to parties. I did a video. You need some help? Yeah, we don't have. You have that little key to, to uh, open your uh. Okay, I'm sorry about that. I just had a little interruption. Yeah, so, uh, you know, as Christians, we need to work together and study the Bible and apply it to our lives. There is a process to things. And like I said, if you want to feel better about yourself, study your Bible. Praise God. Worship Him. Focus on what He wants instead of what you want all the time. Because if we focus on just what we want, well, we might want alcohol, we might want drugs, we might want marijuana, we might want all of this negativity, negative stuff. For me, it's root beer. Now, I'm going to tell you why that's very serious. Some people um, might say, why root beer? What's the big deal about that? It damages our body into the acid, or at least that's my, my limited medical knowledge of it. And the Bible says to treat our body as a temple. And what does that mean? That means that to treat our body as something, that, something that's holy and something that's sacred and not to damage it. Well, me drinking rubia is damaging my body. And sometimes it's not just rubia. It could be dot coke or dot dot the pepper or whatever. It can be dot, damages our body. And um, some people might say... Uh, well, if it's damaging our if it, if you want to talk about damaging our body, what about uh, for those of you who are little? Please stop right here because this is about to get very serious. Suicide. Now, uh, the Bible does say that uh, the wages of sin is death, but I believe that uh, whenever it comes to stuff like that, I believe that uh, that we should watch what we uh, we say about that, especially to others. Because it's not up to us to decide who goes to heaven or who goes to hell. No, and it, it, that's in between them and God. And sometimes we don't know uh, the person's life. I, I'm not trying to make an excuse for suicide. But sometimes we, um, we just, you know, make decisions off of our own limited knowledge. And some people, you, some pastors even think that committing suicide was in you to hell. Well, the wages of sin is death, but guess what? There's a guy out there that loves us. And uh, I believe that, uh, you know, if we have a good relationship with him, we're going to go to heaven. No matter what. We're going to go to heaven. And listen, if we follow that, that, um, Bible verse to the letter for the wages of sin is death, and we all deserve to die and go to hell. All of us deserve to die and go to hell. No matter if we commit suicide or not, we all deserve to die and go to hell. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, please keep uh, my family in your prayers. My sister's going to get married. Uh, one of my brothers is looking for a job. Uh, my other sister, she has a job, but, you know, she needs prayers. To, that way she can, uh, hopefully she can keep the job. Uh, my mama works. One of my other sisters work. Hold on. Sorry guys, again, I had to, uh, I went, uh, somewhere, and I enjoyed time with my family. And yeah, so let's get back to what we were talking about. You know, some things take time, and some things take, uh, take, you know, uh, time to do. And time, time is a very, very important thing. Please don't waste time. Because, let's face it, you're never going to get that minute back that you wasted. Or, the, or you're never going to get that a second back that you wasted. And I encourage y'all 
For those of you who get on the computer a lot, every now and then go outside, get a breath of fresh air. Uh, cause guess what? Staying on the computer all day, that's not a good thing. And, uh, you know, we need to get out more. Well, I need to get out more. I'm not saying we, I need to get out more. I'm just being honest. And I'm trying to do what I can. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, you know, as Christians, we need to come together and we need to study our Bible and we need to apply it to our lives. Because that's the process of growing closer to with God. Studying your Bible and applying it to your life. And let me add one. Praising and worshiping Him. That's another part of the process of getting closer to God. Because we need to praise and worship God. We need Him. It's not a question of what we want. It's a question of what we need. And some of us right now have are dealing with severe depression. Some of us right now are dealing with family members being lost due to whatever, like the virus or a hurricane, tornado, electricity, or a heart attack, or something else. You know, we, we need to be there for one another. And we need to hold each other accountable for our actions. We need it. We need to be there for one another. And listen, if um, we're not there for one another, then, uh, you know, we're going to have hard times. And we might not make it through them, unfortunately. But we need to be there for one another. We need each other. <coughs> we need each other. Because guess what? It can be my fault if somebody goes to hell or heaven. I'm also hell. I sort of think of it like this. Uh, it, it, it can be, like, I understand that, you know, it's not all my fault because uh, people make bad decisions. But if I encourage them to make that bad decision, then that's not only their sin, that's mine as well. That's how I look at it. That's not only their sin, that's mine as well. And we need each other. We need each other badly. The Bible says, For all have seen and fallen short of the glory of God. All of us means me too. Means your pastors, your therapists, your friends, your family members, your children, if you have any. You. I will never forget this. One time the pastor said, I pretty much chose the exact words, except he was pointing to people, and one time he pointed to me. And that really means a lot. Because I don't know if y'all know this, but, uh, you know, I'm a Christian. And I have a learning disability. And some people think, oh, uh, people with learning disabilities, they are automatically uh, going to be excused because of uh, their learning disabilities. You know, they're not, they can be excused for making that mistake. Or they can be forgiven for that. Sometimes the answer is yes, but sometimes the answer is no. You see, uh, that's in between them and God, not them, God, and us. And God does give people who are learning disabilities second chances, and He does hold them to high, st sometimes to uh, certain stand, well, all the time to certain standards. And we can sin just like everybody else. Hold on, I need the bathroom. I'm so sorry for all of these interruptions, but I needed a bathroom. And you see, sometimes the devil can use things like these interruptions to uh, make it seem like, oh, well, maybe I shouldn't do the video, or maybe I should stop it here or there. Whenever God's saying, no, keep on going, keep on praising me, keep on worshiping me, keep on studying my word. The Bible says, study to show thyself approved. And we need to do that. We need to study our word. We need to do that. This. this is why these videos are so very important. I, I do realize I do three videos a day, but, you know, y'all should at least watch this one. That's the way I feel. The others are really just to, you know, make people relax, just to help them calm down, just to, you know, slowly introduce them to the Word of God. But not, but not to shove it down their throat. Like, uh... 
because you know I don't want to do that. I want people to come to know God slowly, because if I rush into it, they might not mean it, and then they might be lying to me. You know. But yeah. And let me get to back to our apps that we play. On Mondays is Star Trek Fleet Command. On Tuesdays is War Machines. On Wednesdays is War Robots. On Thursdays is Minecraft. On Fridays it's Mobile. Gun to Mobile. On Saturdays is Star Force. And on Sundays is Retro. And what do I mean by Retro? Well, I have these two emulators. And they're official emulators. I have the Atari Vault collection I think it's called and the Sega Genesis plus Mega Drive collection and I'm gonna just be chilling out I'm not sure about how long those videos are gonna be because you know the older games they not they're not as long long and they're not as competitive as uh well some of them aren't as long as as competitive as the newer ones because I want to keep it interesting I don't want to keep it boring so yeah But, uh, yeah, so, uh, wait, let me see something. Where did I put my phone? Hold on. Oh, it's right here. Yeah, I had my phone charging earlier. So, that's why I didn't use it. And it was off this whole time. Wow. Let's see. I wonder what that was. Let me see. Oh, that's my meds. Four minutes, that's another thing I gotta do, take meds in four minutes, okay. Man, a lot of things is happening during this video today, huh? I mean, sheesh, a lot of things are happening. But yeah, so, um, and how do we apply what we learn from the Bible to our lives? Well, we can do that, uh, we, we can, um, you know, just do what it says to do, or don't do what it says not, or do it, do what it says to do, and don't do what it says not to do. Like, uh, for example, um, there was some confusion originally with uh somebody that uh like, like let me tell you like this, they thought that some animals were unclean. You know, God says no, I made all of the animals; they're all unclean. And the and the person didn't want to eat them because he thought that they were unclean. But but God said, "Well, I just told y'all, I kind of did it out of order. I'm sorry. This is improv, which means I don't have a script, except for the Bible verses that I read ahead of time sometimes, and that's just to make sure that I don't stutter or that I pronounce the words right, or that I uh, don't uh, that I personally understand what it's talking about." Sometimes I have to do some research on my own. Not all the time, though. In fact, I don't think I ever had to do research on my own. But, um, yeah, I used to do them out of order. And the problem with doing that out of order is you're taking them out of context. And we, the entire Bible needs to be in context, so that's why we're doing this. The entire Bible needs to be in context. And what do I mean by in context? I mean like stories taken from here and there, they can mean something. They can seem like they mean something, but because you're taking them and you're not seeing the whole picture, you're ruining them. And that's what I believe. Plus it's easier for me to like, I, I can do this ahead of time as opposed to the old way where I can only record one Bible video per day because um, because I had this app that would, uh, show me one random Bible verse per day. And, yeah, I had a hard time getting everything done. And I can just do this in my free time whenever I want to. Kind of like the other one, but I can do more of these per day. And it's almost time for me to take my meds. Yeah, so, uh, I'm just waiting for the alarm to go off. So, um, yeah, so there is a process of thing of things like uh, there there are processes for reasons, and sometimes that's to test us, sometimes that's to show others our love for God, 
Sometimes it's to do both. Sometimes it's to make us realize, hey, you know what? I, I was really selfish. All right, let me take that back. I'm really selfish, and there goes my alarm. I'm going to pause it again and take my medicine. It's only going to take about two seconds, but y'all won't notice. Hello, everybody. I'm back again. So I was explaining that there, um, there's a process to things. Like, there's a process to life, too. I mean, think about it. Whenever you're born, there's a process of you coming out the wound or having surgery to be removed. Or whenever you die, well, there's a process for your funeral, hopefully. And whenever you live and there is a process, the entire life is a process. The entire life, God's working with, with you to uh, help better yourself. There's a process to that. There's a process to everything. That's what I believe. There's a process to everything. And this, there's even a process to making these videos. I mean, I know it might seem random, but let me give you an example. Today, um, the date of this video is, today's date is May, Wednesday, May 4th. Yeah, that's the process of me getting the video done ahead of time. There are processes to these things. And I'm not sure about how many videos I'm going to be able to do Sunday because I got church twice and I plan on going. Sometimes I don't because I have Tourette Syndrome or I have trouble sleeping. And I just need the extra time to help me sleep. But I try to at least watch it online. You see, I would much rather somebody watch it online than not, than not watch it at all. But, but if you have the option of going to church and if you live in an area that's not under lockdown or has a bad COVID cases or you or uh maybe something else I've been thinking about then uh you know don't, don't go but if you uh if you uh if you think it's okay to go go and hang out with your friends hang out with your uh, fellow believers God said wherever two or more are gathered in his name, he will be there. And I believe that that's true digitally as well. And what do I mean by digitally? I mean by live streaming. And sometimes, uh, well, I'm not really sure how it works with, with content that's already been, uh, like, recorded. I'm not sure how that works. But, yeah. And I'm not no expert. I'm far, far from being an expert. But I encourage y'all to study your Bible and apply it to your life. Because studying the Bible, that can take, uh, that's a process in and out of itself. And I encourage y'all to start, start from the beginning, which is Genesis 1-1, and work your way all the way through Revelation. Because sometimes we, if we start in the middle of something, we might get, we might be confused. And um, there was this one person that said that they started with Revelation. And I find that interesting because Revelation is supposed to be the final book. But I guess that's where all the action happens. Well, not all of the action, you know, most of the action because of end times and wars and stuff like that. And right now, I have a book. I haven't opened it in ages. It's called The King James Only Conspiracy. And what it is, is about uh, different translations of the Bible. And like how uh, some people say that King James is perfect. That King James has no flaws. That King James is this, that, or the other. Well, listen. I believe that every Bible verse, every Bible, every version of the Bible is a little different here and there. And we need to understand those differences to fully understand what's going on. So if something doesn't seem quite right to you, maybe look up it up in a different version of the Bible. I mean, uh, for those of us who have internet access, you can do things like this right here. Like, let me show you. Click that, and boom, a ton of different versions of the Bible. I mean, a lot. I, I don't even know. Okay. Okay. And we have, uh, you know, some of us have money, but for those of us who don't have the ability to look it up on uh, on uh, the internet, or maybe like you find the internet too distracting for you to study, I 
I urge you to get a, a Bible either from your local church or from online or whatever. And uh, but um, and study it. But if you get it online, please be careful because there are some of them online ones that are scams. Some of them, you know, I urge you to do it through official sites like Amazon or, um, you know, I urge you to do it through Amazon basically. Or, um, oh yeah, just Amazon. And right now, uh, my family is going through so much right now with, uh, with my little brother. He's having say tests. I know I said this before, but I'm going to go back over this. My mama works. One of my, two of my sisters work. One of my brothers is looking for a job. The other one works. You know, it takes a lot of, uh, and then the price of gas is fluctuating a lot. And then the price of, of uh, you know, shipping is probably really going to go up because of the price of gas. Well, I'm not sure how that works. But, uh, yeah. But we need to work together as Christians to help solve some of the problems. And I know that we can't solve every problem, but I believe that we can solve at least most of them. Like, we can't make everybody happy, but I believe that we can make, like, we might be able to, um, like, let me give you an example. If you teach, if you give a man a fish, you feed him for a day, but if you teach him for, for, if you teach him how to fish, you feed him for a lifetime. And that's what people need. They don't always need, uh, like, uh, sandwiches and stuff. They need to learn how to make the sandwiches themselves, how to, uh, Understand the ingredients behind it, whether they want, what kind of bread they want, what kind of, uh, like, do they want any meat or do they want a vegan, uh, uh, vegan burger? Like, what is it? We need to teach them that. So I urge you to not, if you're going to invest in something, I urge you to invest in two things, food programs or school programs for other countries. And I urge you to also make sure that the money that you're spending is um is legit is like it's not a scam that like it's not going towards any scams. Because let's face facts, people can be cruel. They can use events to their own advantage. They can use events to um better themselves as opposed to better everybody else. Just be careful where you send your money. Yeah. And please pray for uh my father. He's having some trouble with his phone. My well, phones. And he just I'm just trying to teach him something but he doesn't understand it. I'm trying to show him something but he doesn't understand it. But yeah, so um uh, yeah, and what do we do about all of this sin, all of this destruction, all of this despair, all of this sadness, all of this wickedness? Well, we study our Bible and we apply it to our lives. And, and, and um, there, to me, that goes, to me, there's also something else that means pretty much the same thing, or well, it means the exact same thing. Is that if you want to change your nation, start with yourself. That's a, I'm uh, oversimplifying a Chinese proverb. Yeah, so, um... Yeah, so we need to uh, work together as Christians.
we need to, to work together as Christians. And to be like, that's not right, this is not right, such and such is not right, such and such is sinful. You know, we are, uh, a lot, because a lot of times we let people get away with things. We uh, try to be like, oh, well, he, uh, he didn't really mean to hurt me that bad. No, we need to tell him what he hurt, why, why we think he hurt us, or she hurt us, or whatever, and to understand each other. And sometimes, yeah, we're in the wrong. I could be in the wrong sometimes. You could be in the wrong. We can all be in the wrong. Or sometimes we both, like if it's uh, like a couple, perhaps they're both in the wrong in some ways. Yeah, so I'm just trying to make sure that, uh, you know, you can't please everybody. No matter how hard you can't try, you can't please everybody. Because some people want to live in their own stupidity. I know I say that word a lot, but that's true. Some people just, I, I, I know from experience, some people are like that. And some people have second chances, they have third chances, but they choose not to take them. And what's going to happen? Those choices are going to come back to haunt them. And it might be too late to save them. Which is sad. I mean, but let's face facts. Not everybody dies and goes to heaven. And sometimes we are partially to blame. And sometimes it's not, it's not uh, our fault. Because uh, sometimes like we might say like, Hey, you shouldn't do that, or you shouldn't do this, and uh, you know, or you're gonna get punished if you do this or that if they're small here. Yeah. But if not, if we let them go through what they're going through and don't say nothing about it, then we are partially responsible. I mean, we can't. Sometimes we can't stop them, but we can encourage them not to do the things that they're doing. And some of us aren't doing that. Some of us aren't encouraging others. And that's what we need to do. We need to encourage others. And we need it. It's not something that we want, it's something that we need. And uh, I'm not sure uh, how these videos are going to be able to work Sunday because I have a lot to do Sunday so I have to do them well ahead of time. But I think that everything will be okay. I'm putting it all in God's hands. And also, uh, I'm thinking about uh, putting, some of, putting some of my episodes on Blu-ray. So let me know what y'all think about that or if y'all think that I should uh, save the money and get something else or save the money and uh, just uh like like just to save it like just for like an emergency or something because I've been praying to God about uh, what I should do with my money but I understand that you know it's my, it's up to me too not just him and uh you know God gives us choices for reasons he does. And sometimes that those choices are there to help people, sometimes they to hurt people. And by hurt people, I mean that I get them to realize what they're doing is wrong. Because sometimes we are... Well, actually, I guess I would be helping people too, in a way. But sometimes we have to apply that tough love. And sometimes we have to be tough. We have to be tough. And today, I was very proud of myself, which maybe I shouldn't be, but I was able to get off my computer for a little while and go outside and, and listen to a sermon and uh, listen to some music. And me, I'm a 90s kid. I'm going to admit that, so sometimes I like to listen to Power Rangers theme songs. But, you know, sometimes we just need a little distraction from what's going on in our life. And what we should do is let God be that distraction. And I know that I just sinned, and I said that I watch power. I listen to power and just theme songs, 
because I believe if it's not of God and if it's not educational and if it's not um, like there to lift somebody up or there to or somebody asking praise, person is a sin. Because that money, that uh, like those recommendations that people get, the, the, those can be used to cause other people to sin, especially if it's a TV show. Because if it's a TV show, they get paid for stuff, and the more you watch it, the more they get paid, and the more they get paid, the more they do the, the more they uh, continue to sin. Some of them. And I understand that it's a little different with YouTube and the internet and, you know, things are a little different in that, those areas. But I recently had a conversation with somebody that said, Hey, uh, movies on YouTube are free. Why don't you just watch that? And I was like, and, and they was like, you're not going to get in trouble for that. And I was like, well, well, what I should have told them was, I don't care, it's still a sin. That's what I should have told them. But I didn't tell them that because I didn't think about that. And to me, it's okay, like, if you want to watch, like, a quick scene of, like, your favorite movie here or there. Like, for instance, they have uh, this movie called Independence Day, which is about these aliens that come and attack humanity. And at the end, they have this good speech, and sometimes I like to listen to the speech. But, uh, you know, on my phone, and my phone doesn't have a DVD player hooked up to it, so yeah. Or, and uh, I'm not going to buy that just for one speech. I'm not going to buy that. But I'm not, but listen, I'm saying, maybe I'm wrong with that. Maybe I have sin. Maybe that's a sin. But I don't want to encourage others to sin on my behalf. But listen, there is something else that y'all need to think about. If you tell somebody to stop doing the same thing you're doing, they're not gonna, a lot of them are not going to listen to you. If you want them to stop doing what they're doing, you start with yourself. Then that goes back to my proverb I told you, start with yourself if you want to change your country or the world. Start with yourself. Start with you. That's why I keep on looking that way or that way. But I, I really do need to get me a, a, a tripod, but I don't have, I really don't have a lot of room for it. But I understand that eye contact is very important, and uh, that that uh, just makes it seem more realistic, I guess. You know, looking somebody directly in the eyes, whether that be over a camera, or an, well, I'm not really looking anybody in the eyes. I just like to to do that because it makes it seem uh, more human to me. I know that sometimes I'll look up there, but that's just need the time because I didn't start on my phone because my phone was charging. Yeah, and please, uh, please keep me in your prayers. I have, uh, you know, sometimes I have my good days, sometimes I have my bad days. Like, uh, for example, I went to the court ranch, uh, it would be some time, let's see, this will air Sunday, so it would be some time, um, last week I went, or maybe the week before, I don't know, but my, my memory is not that good, but anyway, uh, I went to the court ranch, and we was playing this VR game, and my Tourette started acting up. And I had to tell my sister about it, and uh, we stopped playing it, and then uh, somehow uh, they stopped, and then my thread stopped. And, well, we stopped playing the game, and we didn't go back to it, and my thread stopped. And for those of you who are like, how can you live with red syndrome? Well, it's just something that you have to deal with. It's like somebody that's crippled. That means that they 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 could still get around somebody that's blind. They can still feel things and read. And somebody that's deaf, they might not be able to read, but they can see somebody, like, lips, and they can read. And, uh, let's see, I said somebody that's blind. Or somebody that's deaf, that's what I mean, somebody that's deaf. They can still see somebody's lips and read braille. And somebody that's blind, 
when some of them can still read Braille. Now you, or, um, now you don't have to be, read Braille to be deaf. You can just read regularly if you want to. And for those of you who are like, what's Braille? Braille is like these little dots. And depending on how they are arranged, depends on like what uh, letter uh, what letter uh, it is, like what le what letter they're being used to replace. But yeah, and uh, listen, God loves you. He does. He does love you a lot. And if y'all think, if, let me, uh, let me show y'all donate, a donation site that y'all can donate to us by. I think I have this in the description and I think I have this in the outro, but sometimes, uh, I forget. So yeah, so this is Patreon. Patreon is a monthly subscription thing that you pay me as a creator. And, uh, you can pay me $3 a month. And, uh, that's like a cup of coffee and a breakfast biscuit. And that's, that, that's what you'd be sacrificing for one day. And I would pay me for one month. Y'all can go up to a little bit higher to nine dollars a month. And that's, uh, you know, a bit more expensive. And, uh, y'all can also go up to twenty-five dollars a month. And at twenty-five dollars a month, I'm not expecting a lot of y'all to do. But let's review what we get with the, with the, uh, tiers. Okay, so tier one, you get a thank you email. Your choice is side. Patreon on the updates and community chat. You get exclusive, uh, I don't know what this is, I keep on forgetting, but you get voting power and everything in the previous tier. And in the last tier, you get your name in the credits, a personal thank you video, and everything in the previous tier. Yeah, I might change this right here because this, I don't know what that is. I might put a. Uh, I don't know. I might just get rid of that. But as you can see right here, we don't have anybody donating. Like, nobody at all. As y'all can see, I, where I highlighted that. And if y'all are watching this on smaller... Well, tell you what, let me make this bigger. Let me make this bigger. You see? Now y'all can see it better. Now y'all can see I'm not lying. Because we don't have anybody, and uh, this is a legit site. Like, thousands of people use this. And I use this because I can't use YouTube right now because I don't have the watch time. And, uh, yeah. But I just like to have an option out there. I don't know why YouTube just doesn't allow everybody to have that option to uh, join their channel and get, uh, Pay so much a month. I mean, you think they would, but they don't. I guess maybe because of uh dopamine, but that's that that has to do with the brain and your reward system, and I'm I don't think it's that. But yeah, and uh, please keep me in your prayers. Me and my little brother might be watching a movie tonight. If he's not punished, or or if something else doesn't happen, because you never know, you never know. I and mean, I'm not saying that he's always punished. I'm just saying that sometimes, you know, like we go places or we go somewhere and we don't have the time to watch the movie, or we do something. And please, uh. Please keep the uh the poor in your prayers too, cause some of them don't have access to uh electricity or to Wi-Fi or to um uh, how should I put this to uh to a Bible, and sometimes the best thing that you can do somebody is give them a Bible and tell them that you love them and God loves them too. Because uh, sometimes, don't get me wrong, money helps, but sometimes they need to hear the word of God. And that goes back to that process. You see, the process 
of them being saved can start with you giving them that Bible. Or it can start with you being nice enough and giving them some food. Now some people give just give them money. And I encourage y'all not to do that. Because some of them use that money for drugs. And things that they shouldn't use that money for. And y'all shouldn't do that. And I know that they shouldn't do that either. But some of them are so addicted to that and they, they've been kicked out of I don't know how many homes because of that. But yeah. And we need to be there for one another. And we don't need to be foolish about it though. We don't need to be foolish about it. And I hate to end these videos because I like talking about the Bible. But I can see the timer is uh, approaching the one hour time limit. And the one hour time limit is not always exactly, I'm not always going to stop it at exactly one hour. That just is there because it takes a while for me to edit and upload and uh, capture obviously. And that uh, helps me and sometimes uh, you know, a bunch of people don't have a, like two or three hours in a day. Some of them only have one hour. And that's what this video is for. Well, this video is for everybody. But to me, uh, that's why, uh, you know, some people, uh, have jobs. Some people have, uh, only certain times that they can go online. Because some of them might be students. They might be, uh, little kids. They might be, um, you know, might be little kids. But anyway, bye guys. Hey guys, if y'all like this video and y'all want to share the word of God, y'all can like and subscribe and comment. And if y'all want to donate some money, we have a Patreon page. Now the Patreon stuff starts at $3 a month and it goes up to $25. And the reason why we do it monthly is because that gives us an idea of what we're going to be able to make, like, for the next month. Anyway, bye, guys.